With a name like Grime, I was walking into this game with a very, very different expectation to what I was delivered. I was expecting a slimy, dark, dank experience that wanted me to go grab the nearest kitchen implement and scrub the surfaces as hard as I could. But instead, I was left with something that took me on a little bit of an emotional journey and in a majestic and alternative way. At its heart, Grime is an action RPG and it takes elements from all over the place. It grabs some of Dark Souls, it grabs some of the Metroid, and it grabs the visuals of Clay Fighter. And it's done it in such a way, it's created a really unique experience. The game's made by Cloverbyte, and this is the second time this week that an indie studio has really impressed me with all their work. Now before we talk about the action RPG elements and the weapons and the skills that were very, very enjoyable and worked really well, I do want to talk about the world first. Similar to the Dark Souls series, the game doesn't handhold you in terms of what's going on in the story. All you know at the start of the game is that you've spawned in as this kind of rock man with a black hole for a head. And it's almost like this unknown absence of a story in this weird and majestic world is what keeps you driving on through. The world feels like a geologist's dreamland. Everything is made of rock and sediment and this is the whole theme that kind of flows through the game. Everything you fight and go up against has some sort of rock-like feel to it. When you hit enemies with a weapon, they crumble and fall to the side, and when they move, they have this kind of majestic weight to them, as if they were made by heavy, dense materials. The lighting is absolutely phenomenal. It's a mixture between dark biomes and secret corners to lush, open, light environments where dust falls and the light kind of gleams on through. The game may be a side scroller but what they've done with the backdrops adds this beautiful 3D depth to it and you really get to see the whole brevity of the world, just how big and all the existence around you is. When you start moving into the later biomes there's one where the ground is constantly crumbling above you and the sand kind of trickles down and the light streams in from the background and it almost looks like it could be Pompeii with all these figures kind of standing there kept in stone. And you wonder to yourself, was this once a great society? Are they just rocks with a humanistic element to them or is there more of a story there? Now what also I really liked is not only the worlds were really really beautiful but the fact that the music kind of harmonised with it perfectly. It was never big boomy action music that was roaring all the way through it just had these subtle big bassy undertones that kind of felt like they belonged in a world made of stone. And to be honest it's no surprise that they are selling the music to this separately because it was absolutely brilliant. The great thing about this game though is it isn't just about the worlds. The combat and the action are really really fun. So your character is a humanistic stone figure with a black hole for a head and there are several elements to the combat. So to start off you can carry two weapons and these come in three flavors. You've got strength, you've got dexterity and you've also got resonance. And each of these weapons come with two modes, you've got the normal standard attack and you've also got a heavy attack. Alongside this you have the unique mechanic of using the black hole on your head. Now at its heart it is just a parry system with an execute, a very pretty execute at that, but that is what it is at the base level. So how it works is when an enemy swings towards you, you activate your black hole and if you do it at the right time you will suck them in and absorb their essence. Now the timing on this parry is important because if you get it wrong the enemies will punish you and there are a lot of enemies that you will need to learn their various timings on. Aside this it also acts as a ranged throwing counter. So if something's thrown at you you get to suck it in and then it will throw it back at the enemy that threw it. Similar to other Dark Souls games there's also a stamina bar so you can't just continually swing at an enemy. And also to help you avoid various enemy abilities there is also a dodge function which is a dodge forwards or a dodge back. Now I touched on this before but it is an action RPG. There is a stat system underneath everything which you can use to basically tailor your own builds and playstyles. So I've mentioned three of them already. There's strength, dexterity and resonance and there's also health and force. Health is pretty self-explanatory, force is your stamina bar and strength, dexterity and resonance are the different weapon playstyles that you want to go into. And you do this by collecting mass. Now mass is similar to souls so you collect them, if you die then you lose a portion of them. And additionally on top of this you also have to run back and collect them from your body. Now there is also a talent system which is fairly interesting and works in the following way. So each enemy has a certain amount of times that you need to absorb them using your black hole on your head. 
Once you've done this, you get access to a perk associated with that enemy. And to do this, you need to collect special shards from hunts, which you gain from particularly difficult enemies. And a few entry level examples of this are so when you absorb an enemy, you get a certain amount of stamina refunded, or alternatively, when you absorb a projectile and it goes back, it actually does more damage on the way back. In total, there are 18 of these traits, and they all have between 1 to 5 shards that you can put in them to make them stronger. Now, I will warn you in advance, you can respec these, but they cost another shard to do so, so make sure that you pick the one that you want beforehand. Now, in terms of weapon play and how they actually felt, I absolutely love this. I've always got a big bugbear that when I've got a huge two-handed weapon, if it doesn't feel like I'm, you know, carrying something very, very heavy and it's slow and cumbersome and powerful, then it's a little bit of a letdown. But this absolutely nailed it. If you've ever played Monster Hunter with the two-handed maces, it had that same sort of feel. They were big, powerful and clunky. And the same could be said for all the more finesse style weapons. So daggers, for example, felt fluid, quick and fast. I went for your bog standard strength build. So I had an axe which had a medium swing to it. But there's also a two handed mace which had a huge wind up but felt so powerful when you brought it down on the enemy. In terms of bosses, I absolutely loved them. They were beautiful, the animations were great, and it was really, really fun to get involved with them. They had a nice balance between being taxing and not too overtly punishing. But what I really liked about the bosses is just how they looked and feel. They all had unique elements to them and how they kind of spawn in as well was also very, very good. Now in terms of armor as well, there was lots of customization there. They had various stats, but what I really liked about it was just how different it made your character look. And being a game that is themed around geology, it had the same sort of feel and vibe in the armor sets, being them sandstone or granite and adding, you know, big clunky spikes to the side or jaggedy trousers, but they had a really good look and feel to them. Now I am just going to add in a few caveats because if you don't like Dark Souls games I'm not too sure if you are going to enjoy this. So each of the biomes that I played typically had two waystones in them and basically these are points where if you die you spawn and continue from them. There is a huge amount of exploration in this game. There's lots of secrets hidden all over the place and it often results in you dying a lot of the time because you'll be fighting new enemies. Because of this, you can end up doing the same loops over and over again and it can feel a little bit repetitive at times. If you don't decide to do this with all the different exploring etc, it's not so much of a problem because you kind of just march to the next stone. And when I went off exploring I found myself dying a lot so I had to repeat the same cycles a fair few times. So just saying it is not everyone's cup of tea doing that, but if it is then thumbs up to you, check it out. Anyway, that's all the explaining I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave you with the fact that I absolutely love this. I will be continuing this and finishing it off. And considering this game was under £20 when I bought it, I think it is a really, really good deal. If you're a lover of platformers or Metroidvanias, then you're going to absolutely love this. I highly recommend checking it out. If you do, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But yeah, for now, I'm going to leave it with a big thumbs up. It is on Steam if you want to purchase it. I don't know if it's out on the consoles. I don't believe so. But yeah, go check it out, leave something in the comments below. Everyone have a great day, and I'll be back with more news and reviews soon.